Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. And in today's video, we're talking about growing peppers in Canada. And this is the collab with the Mighty Mustache. What's up, guys and girls? Mighty Mustache here in my pepper dungeon. Why don't you swing by my channel after Ashley's video? And I'm going to talk about my five favorite super hot peppers to grow, why they're good to grow, what they're good for, why overwintering is awesome when you have a short grow season, and why growing in pots when you're growing pepper plants is king for faster growth and faster production. I'll explain everything. Come on by. But he specifically is a pepper crazy guy. So you're going to want to go to his channel to check out hot peppers and how to grow hot peppers. That is not my mojo whatsoever. I don't know how he does it. Sometimes he eats these things raw. The guy is a lunatic, possible sociopath, but he makes some pretty good content. So you guys will have to go check him out. I personally am going to be teaching you about how to grow peppers in Canada and maybe some specific varieties that you may want to check out. I have hot varieties, but I also have normal varieties as well because that's the varieties that I will chew on. I'm not Bobby. I will not eat a crazy, oily looking, greasy pepper. That's not for me. But if you want to see Bobby suffer, then please, please do go, go watch his channel because he's got lots of suffrage videos over there. So starting peppers in Canada, regardless of what zone you're in, you're going to want to start those peppers now or within the next month. The sooner, the better. There are some varieties out there that have lower number of growing degree days. Therefore, you can start those later. I typically start my peppers around the same times as my tomatoes. Now, without a heat source, whether that be from a register or from a heat pad, whatever the case is, the germination can take time. So if you want germination to speed up a little bit and you don't want to run the risk of potential seed rot, then adding some sort of heat source, very gentle heat source to it, will make a huge difference in how quickly that seed decides to germinate. Overall, growing peppers in Canada, the best solution I have found personally, especially for those of us in the lower zones, is containers. Me and Bobby had a Zoom call when we were talking about putting this video together and we both agreed that peppers like to do something called bottoming out. They do not like to be in the garden and with the freedom of a garden setting, they tend to just pile on the roots and they just go wild. And this is because peppers really are bushes and trees. They're not meant to be like a, a tomato vine type plant. They're meant to be a bush. And we are really pushing the limits when we're trying to grow peppers in our garden in a very small season. So I personally like to do containers and not just containers, but actually pretty small containers. Or I will put a ton of peppers into a larger container just to fill up that whole container within a tremendous amount of root biomass. What tends to happen is when that pepper bottoms out or if it's stressed in any shape, way, shape or form, it's going to produce flowers because its main goal is to reproduce. So if we can force the flowering stage, that means we can get peppers earlier or we can get pepper, peppers in general. And Linda, you're probably watching this, Linda actually reached out to me last year about this because she put peppers in the ground and she wasn't sure why she couldn't get any flowering, she just kept on getting more foliage. So Linda this year is actually going to try the peppers in the container. So let me know in the comments down below if you've grown peppers in the garden and if you've actually seen this happen where you don't tend to get much of a flowering state when it's in a garden setting. The other big thing with growing peppers in cold climates is that they tend to like really high heat. So the hotter the, the area you have it in, the hotter the pepper or the, the better the formation of the pepper can be. Now, one way to go about this is a hothouse. So whether that be a low tunnel, a high tunnel, a greenhouse, any sort of setting like that where you're able to contain the heat will help. Bobby actually has a huge green, it almost looks like a garage. Bobby, you have to let me know in the comments below what that is, but it almost looks like a garage. And um, he has his peppers in there. The other thing when I'm growing peppers and even tomatoes in a lot of cases, I really try to wait before putting them outside. 
I want to make sure my nighttime ambient temperature isn't going below 10 degrees Celsius. Yes, they can survive in 5 degrees Celsius at night. However, I do find that they tend to be stunted or that they go into a pause mode where they're not really sure what to do and you have two weeks or three weeks where there's just no growth. You just, it's completely stunted. So to prevent against that, wait until it's at least 10 degrees Celsius every night at night. Until then, keep them in a warm area, whether that be a hot house, a tunnel, indoors, whatever the case is. I know it's inconvenient, but it, that two to three weeks in a cold climate can make a big difference as to whether or not you will end up with peppers. One thing I was actually helping with Bob Bobby with last year is the nutrients. So if you're noticing you're not getting a lot of flowering and maybe time to change up the nutrient that you are giving them. So instead of going so heavy on the nitrogen, find a fertilizer that is low in nitrogen and high in potassium or phosphorus, and then use that. That will help with bloom formation. Anything that says flower or flowering formula is going to help that pepper plant bud out rather than putting so much effort into roots and canopy foliage. So let's get into some of my favorite cold climate peppers that you can grab. I'll leave links down below for um, Canadian and American, if I can find them, uh, versions of these. I won't be able to know if the American seed companies I'm listing are any good. So my American crew, literally over half of you, Please correct me if I'm wrong or throw links down below for these peppers if you have any from reputable places that you believe would uh, help out your fellow gardeners. The first one is the red cherry pepper. Now, I've never grown this before, but I'm gonna grow it this year. It is 80 to 100 days, so that would mean if I was to plant them here in the next two weeks, that I would end up with peppers from midsummer all the way till basically it decides to frost over. And these are like pop in your mouth mild, like they don't have any kick to them really at all. They, from what I've read, they're kind of more so like a uh, banana pepper, but they're shaped like a cherry. So I think that's really cool. I like the idea of having peppers for more than just the end months. And I like that they have a uh, s smaller growing season rather than the 100, 120 days that some of the other hotter peppers have. The other one is the Hungarian banana pepper. And this thing is huge. It is like a beautiful um, liquidy yellow kind of color. I find it very, very pretty and I've grown these before. And the craziest part is that they don't need a ton of time to grow. They only need 70 days. That is it. And they are on a little bit of the hotter side. They are closer to between a banana pepper and a jalapeno. I, however, enjoy pickling these because the pickling tends to take a, a little, little bit of the kick there. So I just, I think these are unique. They look really pretty in the garden. And usually when people will come over or when they did come over for barbecues and stuff, they would see them and they'd be like, wow, that's so cool. Like you're growing peppers in your backyard. But what they don't know is it only takes like literally 70 days to grow the Hungarian pepper, banana pepper in our climate. So jokes on them. So because they have such a, a much smaller growing degree day, you really don't even have to start these until March and you will still get peppers off these. So you start them a bit earlier, you're just gonna get peppers a little earlier. These are my other ones. I have to put my thing up here because I don't wanna screw up the pronunciation of these, but it's a shishito, shishito. Um, it's a Japanese pepper and it's a 60 day pepper and it's a sweet pepper and they're really tasty. But the, the key word there is 60 days. So you could start these just a month before, not even a month before. Uh, it's time to put these guys outdoors and you're going to end up with, with peppers. If you choose to start these now, you will have peppers before it's time to put these guys outdoors. So they are just, they're such a quick turnaround, which is very ideal for our climate. So if you like jalapenos, there is a savior out there and it is the lemon pepper jalapeno. 
So they are a different color than your typical green or your typical red jalapeno, but it is only 60 days again. So very valuable there. And then bell peppers, I love all of them. A huge portion of them can be grown in our, in our climate, but I find the ones that do the best are the sweet chocolate bells. They have 57 days. Again, very short growing season. You could start these just a month before it's time to put plants outdoors but they're just unique. It just gives you this big, beautiful chocolate bell pepper that is tasty. It tastes like a bell pepper. It's not spicy or crazy or anything like that. I hope this got helped you guys out. Um, you can bring pepper plants indoors for the winter time and overwinter them inside if you have the room. If you choose to do this, you will end up with a bush or a small tree, just warning you. Um, and obviously there's pest issues and things like that that you have to deal with. So it's a little bit of an art, but it is possible if you decide you wanna keep a pepper plant year after year. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and like I said, be sure to go check out Bobby's channel. He is the pepper king compared to me, and he's crazy. So we'll just leave it at that. He's crazier than a redhead. If a redhead's telling you someone's crazy, you know they're nuts, right? Am I right? I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.